Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for our webinar on 10 reasons why Aspen Discovery is right for your library. My name is Jessica Zero, and with me today, I have Bill Kessler, and today we'll be talking to you just about Aspen Discovery. Hi, Bill. If you have any questions that come up during the webinar, please feel free to use that chat box and we will answer questions as we go along. We'll hit those 10 reasons why Aspen is right for your library. And if you have any questions at the end, please let us know. So the first big reason is it's ILS agnostic. And what that means for you is that Aspen Discovery or an open source discovery layer that integrates all your material can work with any ILS, whether it's Koha, Symphony, Carl X, Horizon, Sierra, or even Polaris. Aspen Discovery can sit on top of your ILS so it can connect your patrons directly to all the material that are available in your collection, whether it's databases, e-content, events that are happening at your library, or maybe a list of all of the new LGBT titles in your collection. This will get you to all material. In this case, you can see an example from one of our partner libraries, Nashville Public Library. This connects directly to their ILS where their patrons can search and find everything available in that collection. On the back end for administrators and staff members, you can view that information that is connected directly to your ILS. In my example here for Aspen Discovery, I'm connected directly to Koha, which is an open source ILS. This will show me the number of users that have logged in. If I have self-registration connected, I can see information about self-registration for patrons, and then even information about holds and downloads for particular records. This dashboard will give you information about that connectivity. Number two, we think about all of our patrons and how they're accessing the e-content that we have. Well, Aspen Discovery is e-content rich. What that means is Aspen can connect directly to the major e-content providers like Overdrive, Hoopla, Cloud Library, Access 360. When our patrons perform a search, we want them to find all the material that we have, not what's just on the shelf in print, but also what's available electronically. In this example, you'll see our results for Gone Girl. Aspen Discovery will group together all available formats. So instead of looking at five or six different records, I can see one record for Gone Girl and all formats available. So now I can see that my library not only has OverDrive, where I can see that OverDrive, but I also have access to Hoopla. So I can use my preferred e-content provider. I can see that there's e-audio and e-books, and I can even see a breakdown for a Kindle option. So if I'm a patron who has a Kindle and I wanna be able to read directly on my Kindle because I'm getting ready to go to uh, the beach for a week, I can easily download that information. Your other option with e-content integration is the ability for your patrons to see that information in their checked out titles and even their holds. This will show them the titles that they have checked out where they can either read it online or listen online. If they have a renewal available, they can renew and they can even return it depending on that format that they've chosen to download it with. It's a great way for them to see all information in one place. Now the perk is, if they like to use that app, some people may be hooked on that Libby app, they've been using it for so long. If they open or check out something in Aspen Discovery, it will automatically show up in that Libby app. It's a great way for them to have access seamlessly in all locations. Again, for your staff and administrators, on the back end of Aspen, you'll also be able to see the usage. So I can see checkouts, users, hold attempts, 
early returns, early checkouts. It's a great way for you to see all of this information in a graphical, beautiful form. And if you want to look at that raw data, comparing those dates. So you can see when we first hooked it up in February of 2020, and then taking you all the way down to those current dates. So not only are your patrons getting the most out of those e-content providers, but now staff can also see that information on the back end. Number three, database discovery. As a longtime librarian, I know it's been a struggle to bring in information that's outside of the traditional catalog. We think about things like consumer reports or Chilton's or Freegal, Mango Languages. These are all databases that we've subscribed to for our library that we want our patrons to view and be able to use. The nice thing with Aspen Discovery is bringing all of that information into one place. You'll see in this example from our partner at Washoe County Library System, when a patron performs a search for career, it brings up a database result for BrainFuse. BrainFuse is a database that offers a one-stop shop for job seekers with a Washoe County Library card. So now those patrons can see right away that they can jump in and look for that career assistance. So not only are they seeing what titles are available in the collection as far as print goes, but they can also see the databases that are available. You can use what Aspen refers to as placards to highlight this information. Placards allow staff to create a beautiful interface which will show the user how they can learn more about a database, link them out to that particular database, and how those databases are triggered when the patron searches. Staff can create what we refer to as keywords. Those keywords are what will populate this placard. Now, placards can be used for more than just databases. You can also use them for any type of subscription that you have, or maybe even summer reading. Placards can highlight databases, subscriptions, events, anything that's going on at your library. It's a nice, easy way to get those results right in the eye of your patrons. In this case, this is one of our partners in an Illinois consortium that allows you to view the information for Ancestry Library. So this shows you access to those resources right away. Number four, highlight activities and special collections. We want our partners and patrons to know exactly what's going on at the library and all of the rich content that we have. Aspen allows us to highlight that information. In this example, you'll see one of our partners from Utah, Uenta County Library. They are using the Aspen Discovery Web Builder. This allows them to customize a home page where they can highlight upcoming events, featured activities, and even clubs that are available to users. In the case of events, you can see they have a little calendar below and it'll show them any upcoming events that are happening at the library. This is integration with library market, so you can see those events right away. We can also see the events that are going on, like the 2021 summer reading program. This is a great way to keep the information right in the front of your patrons' eyes so they can tell exactly what's coming up at the library. In this case, from one of our partners at Dubuque County Library District in Iowa, you can see they're using a placard, again, more than just a database, as a way to alert their patrons that they can register for summer reading. It tells them what the topic is, and that will take them right out where they can register for the summer reading program. So again, just a great way to highlight the activities that are going on at the library because we do not want them to miss out. Number five, mobile access. Aspen Discovery is built on a responsive theme. And what that means is, if your patrons pull up the Aspen Discovery catalog from your library on their mobile device, 
whether you're, they're using an Android or an iOS, so Safari or Chrome, it will automatically configure to their device so they can easily browse, log in, and check things out. Aspen Discovery also has a mobile app that will be launching this summer. The mobile app will be able to download directly to your patron's mobile device. They'll be able to discover new titles where staff can customize a beautiful interface for them to explore. They'll be able to search the discovery layer and they can even pick a list from quick searches that are recommended from staff. Libraries will be able to customize ways for patrons to contact them, add access to any type of library news or events that may be going on at the library. They can view their digital library card, view their account information to see what items they do have checked out or anything that may be on hold. So no matter which way our patrons choose to search, whether it's just launching a browser on their mobile device or downloading the app from their app store, it gives them quick access to Aspen Discovery. Number six, browse like a boss. In today's society, we all know that there's wonderful platforms that we can explore things like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Apple TV. It's endless, we could talk all day about these. They give our users ways to browse through the collection. You know, what do they wanna view next? Aspen Discovery gives them that same exclusive option. Staff can come in and curate any type of list or search that they feel would be beneficial to their library patrons. In this case, from Jackson County Library Services, you can see that we have an example for um, Celebrate Pride for June. This gives them examples of all different types of titles that they can check out. You'll notice that we can even see subcategories. So as our browse category, we see Celebrate Pride, and then down below, we can even see options for children, teens, award winners, Spanish speakers, and small businesses. So this is a great way for staff to curate a rich collection, but also make it easy for our patrons to come in and browse those titles that we have available. Now staff can also curate lists and make those browse categories as well. Think about all those New York Times bestsellers that we make available at the library for our patrons. That's an easy setup for staff on the back end to pull those titles directly in and curate that list for our users. In our next example here, you'll also see Dubuque County Library District in Iowa. I thought this was a fun one to share for a browse category for games and puzzles. I can tell you right now it is pouring down rain out here and I'm thinking about putting together a puzzle maybe tonight because I feel like we've been in those 40 days of uh, rain. And this is just a fabulous way that users can come in, they can see puzzles that are available, games that they can check out. And it's just a nice way, again, outside of that traditional catalog that we can come in here and see all the options that are available. Number seven website integration. Now, for most of us, either the county or the city, or maybe we even have a website that's created and maintained by library staff ourselves. Aspen allows you to integrate website results right within apps Aspen Discovery. What this will do is this will pull results in. So if a patron performs a search, let's say we're looking for story times, this will present a list of results for the user to see that information. It will show in the explore more section of a regular catalog result, or if the patron just wants to search the library website itself, right within Aspen Discovery, they'll get a list of those results. So in this case, you can see one of our partners from Texas, Round Rock Public Library. By performing that search, I can see results directly from the website. And another example here, you can see Salina Public Library in Kansas. 
A simple search for career brings back library website results where we can see everything from different collections that are available, school options that are available for users, and then of course, looking for jobs all in one place. Remember, the number one goal of Aspen Discovery is to make sure that our patrons find everything that's available in our collection. You'll notice that explore more section right in the center. That will show the user other options that are available. So whether it's lists that show up, um, a link to a database or all catalog results, the user can easily explore other options right within the discovery layer, having access to both print, electronic, databases, events, special collection, archive, and website, all in one search. Number eight, community is everything. Being part of the open source community opens the door to so much more than just a discovery layer. Aspen Discovery connects users all over the world to other users who have implemented Aspen Discovery. On the left-hand side, you'll see something called the Aspen Discovery Gathering. That is a monthly meeting online where users get together and talk about how they're using Aspen at their library. Staff members, librarians, implementation leads from Bywater Solutions, developers and others get together and share ideas. They also talk about the development cycle, what's coming in future Aspen Discovery releases. It's crucial for the Aspen Discovery development team to hear what people are using, new e-content providers, new databases, ways that we want to connect with our patrons. And during these meetings, they share those ideas. On the right-hand side, you'll see Aspen Weekly. Aspen Weekly is a digital magazine that comes out every Thursday morning, and it shares information about Aspen. Within that digital magazine, users can read about how other libraries are implementing things like placards, lists, e-content integration, and how their patrons are accessing that information. Being part of that open source community connects you to users here in the States as well as internationally. It's a great way to be involved and find out how others are using the discovery layer. Number nine, continuous development. With Aspen Discovery, there's continuous development among the product. And what that means for you, every month, or sometimes even a little bit quicker than every month, you will have a release to your Aspen Discovery interface. These releases are performed at night where you have as little downtime to your users as possible. This will send out any update or new enhancement to Aspen Discovery for your users. Each release is documented and we even have little webinar sessions called Aspen in an Instant that will talk to you about all of the integrations and upgrades that you'll see in that release. That way, staff is prepared and ready for what's coming in that release. You can also go back through your administration and view prior releases for Aspen Discovery and see all of the information available. Number 10, the price is right. At Bywater Solutions, we work directly with your library as you're deciding to make a switch to open source discovery. Bill Kessler, who's on the call with me today, is our Aspen Discovery Sales Consultant, and he will work with you to set up a time to do a personalized demo for your library, where we can talk about the goals for your library and what you would like to see in a discovery layer. We work with you on the implementation and migration to a discovery layer, making sure that you get everything you need for that discovery system. If you're ready to learn more about Aspen Discovery, 
please contact us today to learn more. Bill has shared his email address in the chat box, and we would love to set up a customized demo for you where you can learn more information about Aspen Discovery. And if we can answer any questions concerning Aspen, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you for joining us today for 10 reasons why your library should switch to Aspen Discovery. And if there are any additional questions, Bill or I would be happy to answer. And if not, please feel free to contact us uh, where we can set up a personalized demo for you. Hey, Jesse? Yeah. Um, Kendra has a, Kendra Perry has a oh, question for us. Sure. So uh, do you have any examples or, or case studies involving academic libraries? That's a great question. So Kendra, right now, um, we have a few consortiums that have academic libraries that are part of the consortium and using Aspen Discovery. And I can actually, I'll pull an example up so you can see what that looks like. And I'll show you a few of the customizations that we've made for them to use it. Uh, one of those will be the integration of EDS or EBSCO's discovery platform. And that allows users to perform a search where they can see those results in real time. So here's the example of Community College of Aurora. They are part of CLIC, which is a Colorado consortium. And this allows students and faculty members to come in and perform searches. And you can see their um, browse categories are customized. You know, we have one for faculty DVDs, regular DVDs, um, even an ESL collection. And, and this is all customized by the, the community college library. Now, when a user performs a search, that will bring back results um, in the system. So you can see that over on the left-hand side, one of the facets actually shows the campus where they can find that information. Um, they can see what's available now, what's available online, and they also get this explore more section. So this is where they're gonna see that integration with EBSCO's EDS platform. So they can see news results, academic journals, and magazines. And that's gonna bring back those results. It's going to change those facets over here a little bit on the left-hand side. So now I can do things like limit by full text or narrow down exactly what I'm looking for. You can integrate the research starter with EBSCO's EDS platform. So you can see information that is um, available right away for the user. And they can even perform the search um, by just going directly into articles and databases. So if I hit that drop down menu and change to articles and databases and perform that search, that's gonna then bring back um, results that just tie in from, from EDS. So there's some nice integrations there. We're working with another library that's getting ready to migrate this fall. Um, and one of the options on our roadmap is to make course reserves integrated also within Aspen Discovery. So you'll be seeing that in one of our upcoming releases in fall of 2021. Of course, as the Aspen Discovery community grows, um, we are looking for ways to integrate more and more databases as our, you know, user group grows in the community. So, um, you know, I think it's something to also keep an eye on that. Um, we'll probably see more databases coming as, as the community grows. So, Jesse, um, to follow up that question, Kendra yeah. has... So when I send them out to EDS rather than displaying individual articles in Aspen itself? Yeah, that's right. So they can, if let's say there was a um, PDF available. If you're authenticated, this will take them right in where they can view that PDF um, right within the system. If you're using like LDAP or Open Athens or SAML, Okta, you know, whatever it may be, that will connect them out where they can log in and, and view that information right away. So they can they can come to Aspen Discovery first and, and view that information rather than going to EDS 
That way they can see both the catalog and the um, information. Interlibrary loan examples. Great, great question. So one option that you have is um, when you're performing a search, if the user doesn't you know, find what they're looking for, you can have an option pop up where it will tell them, you know, didn't find what you're looking for. In my case here, you can see it says, suggest a purchase. Some people will have an option here that says, make us um, place an interlibrary loan request. Um, we have, I know one of our partner libraries is getting ready to work with InReach um, and Prospector uh, for interlibrary loan. So that will be an option down the road as well. Um, so Jesse, a little follow-up on that. Um, yeah. Desiree, are you speaking that everyone is on the same library system or are you talking about across different systems? And is she able to unmute? Yep. Yeah, if you want to, you can unmute. And... Yep, there we go. Thanks, I didn't have the unmute button there for a while. Um, so in Wyoming, we are a statewide multi-type library consortia. Um, we currently, um, actually we use one type of interlibrary loan software from OCLC to manage in-state holds between libraries who wanna mediate those things. Um, and that's integrated into our enterprise catalog. Um, but then we also hand off um, requests through uh, OCLC's BDX and WorldShare ILL for, for other items. All right, thanks. Um, Jesse, is that? Yeah, are you using, are you using, what are you using for OCLC before I go in and make assumptions? <laughs> WorldShare? WorldShare, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we can talk to Mark directly about, Mark is one of our developers for Aspen Discovery. He's our Aspen team lead here at Bywater Solutions. And we could talk to him about examples for what other libraries are using um, for interlibrary loan integration um, in the system. I know some people will even put like an option up top um, where it will take them out to an ILL form or directly within the record um, if it's not available. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Good questions. Yeah. Are there any other questions that we can answer for you? All right. Well, there are several other webinars coming up in our Discover Aspen series. Um, in July, we'll be discussing more information. If you are interested um, in attending any of those webinars, we can share the link with you directly um, for those Aspen Discovery webinars. They are all free and open to anyone who is um, interested in attending. And I'm gonna, I'll pull this right up top. Um, and it's just a great way to, to get involved um, and talk to other users. Generally, we have um, additional people on. Next month is boosting patron engagement with Aspen Discovery. That's on July 21st. Um, and then in August, we'll be talking about what to expect when you're implementing Aspen Discovery. So we have a really great series coming up. I'll share that in the chat box. And again, it's open to anyone who um, would like to attend um, these series. They're free, so you can share with staff or anyone that is interested. And then Jesse, we have one more follow-up on with Kendra. So is it possible to integrate searches from multiple databases in Aspen without involving EDS? Yeah, that's a great question. So Kendra, for a rule of thumb, you can think of it like this. If we can connect to a database via an API, that allows us to essentially pull the information in from an outside vendor or database into the search results within Aspen Discovery. 
So generally what I tell any of our potential partners is if, you, if there's a certain database that you're you know, interested in connecting, if you would let us know that, then we can look in and see if it has an API that we can connect to. And then that API is what will be able to bring those results directly into to Aspen. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. And there were some really great questions. If we could set up a customized demo for you and you know, really go in, Bill and I could both talk for about two hours about Aspen, we get really excited about it. Um, please contact Bill and we'll be able to set something up for you. And if you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. Nice, and Desiree, we'll follow up 